So let's talk about using the Google Ads Keyword Planner to help you find keywords and more or less plan out your Google Ads campaigns. So when you're in your Google Ads account, in the top, you should see a Tools and Settings option. When you click on that, you can navigate over to Keyword Planner, which should be under Planning. Your setup might look a little different than mine, but the naming should be about the same. So if you just go to Tools and Settings and then uh, Keyword Planner from here, should take you to a page that looks like this and then we'll just use this discover new keywords option then you can start by putting in some seed keywords and depending on your industry that's going to vary obviously so let's just do like roofing roofers and roofing companies and then because those are broad terms, let's say that we're a roofer in Phoenix, Arizona. If we just put those terms into Google, well, we can do this here, into the Google Ads Keyword Planner, I should say. Uh, it's just going to give us the data for the entire United States, which is not really going to be very helpful unless we're a nationwide company. So if we have a roofing company where we serve the whole United States, you know, we have a bunch of different branches all over the place then of course it would make sense to look at these terms but if you're a local business then you want to use the location targeting and we can just do the phoenix uh, location so basically all i'm doing is coming here to where it says united states and then you can just type in your location so let's do phoenix arizona and we can either target the city itself which would look like this here I'm going to remove the United States targeting. So we're just targeting Phoenix. Or we could target the Nielsen DMA region, which is essentially going to be <laughs> this whole area with most of the population being condensed into this area here. Um, and then these are going to be the reach, which if you go here, you can see reach is an estimate of how many people are in or interested in the location you select it's based on the number of signed in users visiting google sites so you can see it only changes by about 2 million when we expand out with this giant area here but most of that population is going to be located in this pocket this city right here right so we can use this whole dma region and click save and now it's actually going to give us the keywords for our area Phoenix. So we can see that there's 3,600 people per month searching for roofing in Phoenix, Arizona. The three month change that's down 33% over the last three months, but up 50% year over year, uh, likely because the housing market's changing around and, you know, things shift. Um, but you'll see trends shifting in different directions on these, depending on what's going on. And then you'll see the competition. Now, the competition can be a little bit confusing because you can see high competition and think, oh man, I don't want to go after those if they're really competitive. The thing is, if a term is competitive, that means it's generating revenue for businesses. That's why everybody's trying to run ads on that keyword, right? So the higher the competition is, typically the better the keyword is going to convert. Now that's not always the case, but generally speaking, that's sort of the rule of thumb. And then the lower the competition, like gable roof, is kind of a broad term that somebody might search for if they don't know what it, what the definition of that term is. So that's probably not going to generate a ton of sales, and it's got the low competition score here. So that's how the competition works. And then there's the top of page bid range low and high range, or top of paid page bid low range and high range, which essentially is Google's... Uh, prediction of what the cost per click is going to be to get to the top of the search results and then they give you a low end range and a high end range so it's usually going to fall somewhere between these and what I find is if you're running ads properly and doing a good job of it you'll fall closer to the low end range and if your ads are not performing very well they're not set up properly it's going to cost you closer to the high end range and that makes sense because Google is highly concerned about its users' experience. It wants people to keep coming back to Google and clicking on more ads so that it can make more money, right? And so the cost per click is going to go up if your ads are not performing well. 
and it's going to incentivize performance. So if your ads are performing well, it's going to give you inexpensive clicks. And if your ads more or less are not doing great, then it's going to charge you for that. It's going to, you're going to pay, pay a premium for that traffic. So those are the columns here. Now you'll see that there's some graphs here as far as what's happening with this conversion data. It can be a little bit much to go through all these graphs individually. So what you can do is actually just export all these keywords. But typically there's one thing that I'll do uh, beforehand. I typically don't like to target branded terms, meaning that this might be a, a competitor, mansard roof, I'm not sure how to say that exactly, but um, TPO roofing, that might be a competitor, like a company in Phoenix that offers roofing services. So if we come over here to the branded terms, like A1 Roofing is a company, Advanced Roofing, HydroTech. We can remove all of these uh, co uh, competitors that are roofers. And then we can also remove the keywords that have manufacturer terms in them, which is going to be like, and these terms as well, which is going to be like Supply, Home Depot. Um, and then the, this is probably going to target or uh, trigger keywords that are having to do with roofing supply like you know these are probably all manufacturers of products well that's what it says right here and so we really want people who are searching for roofing services in this case All right? so we'll remove all of those and now we have a bunch of terms that are related to people looking for roofing and we can see pretty much all throughout the year it's going to be between like 36 and 50,000 searches a month so 35 and 50,000 searches a month. Now, if we want, we can export this as, I'll just do a CSV typically, and then open it up as a spreadsheet really quick here so that we can take a look at the data for each of these keywords in a little bit more depth. I just find it a little bit more consumable in this format. So if we delete these first two columns, we don't really need these. Then we can sort by traffic volume even. And we can start to see, I don't really care about the currency either. Uh, we can start to see what terms get the most search volume. We can see what the cost per click is. And then if we come over here, we can also see how the traffic volume fluctuates from month to month. So for the first term here, which is roofing, you can see it goes from 24 to 29 to 36 and then back down and then back up and peaks out in like December and then drops back down again and then goes up again in March. <laughs> and you can start to figure out like when are there seasonality changes? When when is there a lot of demand for certain uh, services or products based on when search volume increases drastically for specific terms. So with all of this data, you can then start to figure out like, all right, what should we be targeting? Like a whole bunch of these terms at the top here are probably going to be good. Obviously, Scott's Roofing is, is probably a competitor or a manufacturer, but you get the idea. You can start to pick through these keywords, eliminate the ones that you don't want, and figure out exactly which keywords you want to target and then start creating your campaigns and go after them. So I hope you found this helpful. If there's anything you did have questions about in terms of how the Google Ads Keyword Planner works or anything of that nature, don't hesitate to reach out. You can just drop your questions in the comment section below and I'll be sure to get back to them there. Look, if you're the type of person that just doesn't even wanna deal with Google Ads anymore, <laughs> then you can always reach out to me. Uh, my company is Missoula SEO Geek. I'll leave a link to my website down below, but we do manage Google ads for different companies and different industries and you can come learn about what we do, what makes us unique. You can even read some of the testimonials from some businesses that we've taken from zero to over a million in revenue like this one here and really just see that, you know, this is the type of thing that's going to explode your business growth. So feel free to reach out. You can always give us a call or contact us through our website and look forward to working with you.